Um, this is my sub pack M2. I recently have done some uh, repairs on this uh, unit. My first issue was my battery. Uh, I was only getting like five to 10 minutes uh, battery life on my uh, sub pack M2. Uh, so I decided to buy some uh, 18650 batteries and uh, I made my own battery pack, but that was these are some 18650 batteries that I have on this power pack that I have here. But uh, I did have to solder them together and make a new battery pack. So um, let's see here. There's a zipper here on the side that you lift up and you can pull the battery pack out. So this is what I made out of uh, three pieces of the 18650 batteries. They're lithium ion, 3.7 volts I believe. They're standard uh, 18650 batteries. And uh, so you can disconnect it here but the only issue with this is that uh, there is a circuit board that's soldered to the three batteries um, as well up here on top. So I went through all that pain and trouble of uh, take, uh, having to remove that, that circuit board. I don't know if it's some, some sort of a circuit protection uh circuit board you know so you don't overcharge the uh the batteries i guess maybe that's that's the only thing that i could think of because i don't see any other board uh well i guess there could be something in the in the control unit itself but uh but it does have uh so one warning is if you're going to try to build your own battery pack you must remove the the circuit board that's um soldered onto the three batteries here uh, and then resolder it to your new uh, 18650 battery. So I did try to get the best uh, 18650 batteries. Uh, I think the best ones that I found were the LG uh, battery, 18650 batteries. So I did use those and even with those after, I don't know if I put if I added too much heat when I was soldering these uh, batteries together. But I'm only getting about one hour uh, of battery life with this new battery pack. But I am using 100% uh, uh, volume, which, you know, I always have this turned up, the intensity. So at 100% intensity, I, I, I get about an hour or hours worth of battery power so which is all right so but i just wanted to share what i also use uh to extend the battery life of this uh, sub pack m2 so this is what i bought on amazon a while back i don't know if that's pronounced a li a i l i i don't know but uh, this is a um, power bank that has adjust that's adjustable. So I don't know if you can see that uh, it's if you put this uh, set the switch all the way to the left side here, it actually says 3.6 volts, and then the next setting is 5 volts. The next setting is 6 volts. The next setting is 9 volts, and then the next setting is T. If you put it on T, there's more voltage output settings that you can set on the other side. So from this side, it starts off at 12 volts. The next is 15 volts, 16 volts, 19 volts. 
and then the la the highest voltage you could set this is at 21 volts since there are six of the 3.7 volts uh, lithium ion batteries that are inside of it the 18650 so that adds up to about 20 volts there so this is adjustable so that's kind of nice um, I use the six six uh, the 15 volt setting right here well, actually that's 12 so one more over is uh, 15 volts and so uh, you can see that it outputs 14.8 volts that's the output voltage um, when I set it to 15 volts so uh, you have to have a I think this is a, a universal uh, um, adapter I think it's a 5.1 or 5 yeah 5.1 millimeter let's see um, I guess it's like a 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter adapter yeah, so it is a 5.5 millimeter uh, by 2.1 millimeter uh, connector that fits into this power bank here. And I just plug it in there on the output jack of my power, uh, uh, my power, uh, my power bank. And uh, once I plug it into my output of this, I set it to 15 volts here. 15 volts output, which I'm getting 14.8 right now. And then I plug it into, oh, uh, I, need, I needed to buy an adapter for this. So I did purchase one of these guys. It's an adapter from a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter to whatever size this is. You just have to take some measurements of this and uh, from the original charger and then I bought I bought the adapter for this. So all you have to do is plug this in and Sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. Yeah, so it's an adapter from your standard 5.5 to uh, 5.5, and then I adapted it to whatever size fits my uh, sub pack. And then I just plug that into here. And so you can extend the battery life this way. So there you go. It has power. That's it. Then you have extended uh, power. Now I did try to search for this uh, power supply online, and it looks like they changed it now. Uh, they do have it in eBay, but maximum um, output voltage is 12 volts. So you're going to have to search for something that has 15 volts. I did see uh, a product online that is uh, that has a USB-C output, but I don't know if uh, you can uh, use that for this, but maybe you can. But this is what I have. I just wanted to show you my setup and what kind of options you may have if you wanted to extend the battery life on your sub pack. Um, these 18650 batteries is what I went for because then I can recharge them and have multiple 18650 batteries 
to uh, power up my device. Um, you have to buy a charger. So I did buy uh, this is the one that I bought for the 18650. It's the uh, Telecharger i4 made by Nightcore. So I do have two sets of these one which can charge four batteries at a time, and my other set right here so I can charge eight batteries at a time. So that's how I uh, recharge my 18650 batteries. And uh, I guess I bought this back in, uh, was it 2016 or so, but uh, they've, uh, one of my uh, transducers actually failed on me, so I had to purchase a new one. I, f I saw this, uh, I did a search on Google and it looks like somebody had repaired theirs uh, before me. And they suggested to use this uh, Dayton Audio Puck Tactile Transducer Mini Bass Shaker. So this is the one that they 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 purchased. It's the uh, model TT25-8, and it is 8 ohm. I got this uh, on eBay, uh, two pieces at fifteen dollars each. So I paid about thirty bucks for two of them. Because I thought two of them were busted, but uh, after I opened it up and uh, replaced uh, one of them, it looks like it was still working. So, so I think uh, so now I have a spare uh, transducer just in case my other one blows. But uh, this is the old one that I pulled out. You can see that it has the uh, the logo on it, the um, sub pack logo underneath this label it doesn't I try to search for uh, any kind of specs on this these numbers I couldn't find anything so I don't know uh, I just went with the 8 ohm because the other guy said that 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 was the one that he used uh, there is a 16 ohm version but I, I'm not too familiar with all that technology so I didn't uh, I didn't uh, pursue uh, what the differences are between the 8 ohm versus the 16 ohm because I just wanted to get mine fixed ASAP so um, this is this is what it looks like when you pull this one out of the box Dayton audio it's about very similar in size here that's what it looks like but you could tell that this one is messed up because it does uh, rattle. And uh, that, that those were the symptoms that I was having with the, uh, the sub pack before it actually just died on me. So I heard a uh, rattling sound while it was, uh, while the bass was hitting. It's almost like a car speaker that's, uh, that's um, uh, blown or a speaker that, that, that sounds like it's blown. And then after I turned it up uh, and kept on using it, then all of a sudden, all the the whole uh, the vibrations just completely stopped. So, yeah. But this one works. It 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 does work. The um, eight ohm version of this uh, transducer. So I think I saw it on uh, Amazon for $19.99 as well. So if you want to buy it on Amazon, you can. Um, I had a hard time trying to open up my... Uh, um, my sub pack. But I pretty much ended up tearing, up, tearing the... Uh, uh, this little uh, piece of cloth here up at the top of the uh, um, the sub pack to expose the uh, zipper. Once I got to the zipper, I was trying to pull on that zipper as hard as I could, and I could not get it to move. So 
apparently they put some kind of super glue on the zipper here so that you can't uh, uh, work on this thing yourself. So what I ended up doing was ripping the zipper apart at the top here to get all of that. Uh... Well, first I tried some uh, lacquer thinner to uh, to try and um, uh, soften up the uh, the glue, but it didn't work no matter how much I put on it. So I ended up breaking the zipper here, the, the top part of the zipper. And then I just decided to just rip the uh, the the area apart here where the uh, the glue was, so I was able to uh, rip it apart and then just re reattach the zipper. So my zipper does work now, and I could zip it up to the top. Uh, you don't really see this part anyway, so I don't really care about that once once you're wearing it. But yeah, I was able to open it up. So take the zipper. Sorry, this is uh I'm trying to do this with one hand. But once you open this up, you can expose what it looks like on the inside here. So that's what it looks like there. So that's what I ended up doing. There it is right there. I was able to... Uh, if you're careful, I don't know if you'll be able to rip this out without ripping this rubber uh, insulation here. But there is a piece of... Uh, I don't know if it's like 1 8 inch or uh, 3 8 inch uh, rubber insulation that is glued to this plastic uh hard plastic piece right here but uh once i ripped mine out I, the part parts of the insulation started ripping off and so i wasn't able to uh save the insulation uh and then i tried to reattach the, my new transducer to the ripped insulation and it, it wasn't uh bind it wasn't gluing itself very well and uh, I know, you know, with that, you, you don't want anything loose when it comes to uh, vibrating parts. Or else if this thing comes loose, I guess you're going to have some sort of a, of a rattle and you're not, it's not, you're not going to uh, transfer the vibration properly to the, uh, to this uh, pla hard plastic here, which is what you need since this all sits on, uh, on your back here for you to feel the, uh, the uh, uh, the shaking of the uh, of the transducer. So what I did was I I cut out most of I, I cut out the insulation all the way around uh, large enough so that I'd be able to mount my new um, uh, transducer onto the uh, hard plastic. So that's what I did. So it's not mounted to the uh, the the rubber uh, insulation anymore. This part, it's it's actually I mounted it to the hard plastic, which is this right here. Yeah, and I used uh, I, I I scraped it all off with a, a, a scraper. So yeah, you can use something like this. And just you just want to you just want to scrape out all of the uh, the rubber insulation to get to the plastic, so you have a nice uh, flat surface to um, stick your uh, your transducer to. So I mean, you you could see where where I cut out. The rubber plas the rubber insulation here, uh, yeah. This feels like like a neoprene rubber, yeah. So I did use a gorilla 
uh, clear um, double-sided uh, tape to hold the transducer to the plastic. So I did put a lay one one layer of this on the plastic, and then I did I added a second layer onto uh, my transducer here. So I put one layer here, com covered this entire surface, and then I did um, before before I put a layer down on the 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 this uh, backrest here. Um, I cleaned it off really good, scraped all of the adhesive and all that stuff, and then I uh, I kind of wiped it down with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol to uh, clean off all of the uh, the residue, uh, the um, glue, uh, residual glue that was on there. Then I was able to stick everything back together here, and now it's. It's very very uh, stable. It's not it's not coming off. So I did put two layers on there of this stuff. Uh, it's a gorilla tape, so that it 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 would uh, basically give me that rubber uh, insulation that I had removed uh, from the plastic uh, uh, back piece here. So. So at least you have a little bit of uh, rubber insulation there from the uh, double-sided tape, two layers of that. And then that's it. I, I basically put everything back together. It's it's pretty easy. You're going to have to just cut the black and white wire here and uh, either solder them together or use some sort of a connector to connect it to the wires that are inside here. You know, so this is the one that I pulled out. I just cut it here, and then I just attached the black and the white wire from my my new transducer to wherever I cut it. So, yeah, I decided to use a connector. Uh, I don't know if you could see it. Oh, there it is. So that's that's the. Uh, Molex, uh, Molex connector that I used to connect the two. You can you could sol solder them together and use some uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, shrink wrap to cover the uh, the wire connections. But see, everything fits pretty well. And once I did this bottom one, I decided to plug everything in and test it, and it started working. So I'm like, all right, well, it looks like I didn't blow my uh, the one on the top, because then there is another one up here on top, because there's one and two transducers that are on this uh, sub pack M2. So the one on top, I guess, is not was not uh, uh, blown, and I don't I don't know why. Like when I was the symptoms that I was having was it was completely dead. So this one on top wasn't even running, even if it was still good. Since the one on the bottom was not running anymore, then both of them shut off. So I don't know. I'm not too familiar with how it's this is wired, but I guess maybe it's wired in series. And if one is this this uh, prior one is dead, then I guess the second one doesn't run. So once I replaced the one on the bottom, then the, the, the one at the top started running. So I said, okay, I'll just keep this one as a spare, just in case that uh, I have another uh, transducer that blows. Uh, yeah, this, these are just some of the items that I purchased on Amazon. Uh, this is the 5.5 uh, millimeter by 2.1 millimeter uh, male, um, uh, pigtails, uh, cables that I purchased, and all I did was solder those, uh, two of these together so that I had, uh, male to male, and then I pretty much bought, uh, these multi-packs right here of adapters, 14, 
multi-type power plug connector adapters and I guess it has a female 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter female jack on the uh, the inside there so that you can plug in your your uh, your standard here so uh, I don't know which ones I, I bought I bought a bunch of these things just so that I had adapters for everything so I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, you're just gonna have to measure your um, your uh, power cord so this is pretty much what I did that's my sub pack power cord and then I just basically measured the uh, the connector there and you're just gonna have to match match it up with whatever adapters that they have on uh, on Amazon sorry I did this years ago so I don't have all that information anymore and I'm too lazy to uh, to take some measurements here I think you have to uh, take a measurement of the inside diameter as well as the outside well let me just take a quick measurement if you want So this one I'm getting a 3.4 millimeter on the outside. Uh, the inside diameter is not very easy to measure. I think what I did before was I I stuck some sort of a pin on the inside there and then measured the pin to get that. Um, but yeah, that's what I did. This thing, oh, it actually has a, a, a letter on it, H. So I don't know if that's a if there's a spec for an H adapter or what, but well, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, this is what I bought in 2017. The Fimos Mobile Power Bank, 20 volts, which you can adjust. And it, it takes the 18650 battery. Yeah, except that uh, I think they sell. They don't sell it on Amazon right now, but um, I did see it on eBay. But it only goes up to 12 volts now. They don't have anything that goes up to 20 volts. But okay, I did see this item. This is the only one that I saw. Uh, portable power bank laptop power charger but uh, the only problem is that this is uh, 70 bucks 69.99 so I guess you could use it to uh, to charge up your any any of your other devices if you if you needed one anyways but if uh, you might be able to use this but it says that the USB C port has an output that can be uh, 15 volts or 20 volts. I don't know. I don't see a switch or anything on this thing so that you can uh, uh, change the output. And so I, I think it might be automatic. Um, so you're going to have to do some research on that one. But I just wanted to show you that just in case. Yeah, and this is the one that does. they do sell the 8 ohm at, uh, on Amazon for $19.99 if you wanted to purchase that. 
Yeah, so this is the uh, this is that cord that I created. I soldered uh, and I so I soldered uh, some some black and red wires to it to lengthen it, so I have a nice long cord. Um, added some shrink wrap tubing to cover up the joint here and here. So now I have a nice long cord where I can put this in my pocket. Uh, and then I can uh, extend the battery on my sub pack. So I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share my uh, what I did to repair my sub pack. So it still works. I can still use it. Uh, because I guess right now they're not selling the uh, uh, M2 anymore or M2X. So in, in case you wanted to do some repairs, that's what you do have some options on fixing it. All right, I didn't see any other any any videos on this, so that's why I decided to post this. Thanks. If you have any questions, uh, just uh, send send me your questions. All right, talk to you later. Thanks.